It's, it's been a tough week, but we're doing our usual thing. Cozy minimalist plan with me session today. I will be answering the questions that have come in this week, telling you where we are going to be focusing next week for our housekeeping, our decluttering. I'm not going to be here next week. I'll tell you where I am going. I've also got some book suggestions from you, my dear subscribers. And last but not least, as usual, you're getting a choice of four self-care missions. Which one will you choose? So let's dive straight in. Diane and Demerick here, rah, rah, rah. here we go again, a cozy minimalist plan with me session. If we haven't met before, I am Diane in Denmark, I am a routines coach and I'm helping you this year to simplify and to thrive, not just survive, we're thriving. And how do we do that? We have an easy plan for it. I work with you on Mondays where we do a 10 minute guided declutter together. On Wednesdays, we do a 10 minute clean together, whether you're feeling like it or not. And on Fridays, this is when we get to chill and do some planning. Now, today we're not on the clock, we're not using the timer, but you may want to use this time to fold some laundry. Have you completed your morning routine or your evening routine? Maybe you want to do that while we chat. If you're in the office, tidy up the office. But anyway, let's dive straight in with the questions. And I can't wait to tell you where I'm going next week. Anyway, all will be revealed. First question is from Brenda Goldie. And she said, I was looking around at all the mail and paperwork she has, and she realized that she doesn't think that she's seen that I have much paper. Do people in Denmark receive much in the mail? Well, Brenda, I have to say, I can't really remember the last time we got mail because in, in Denmark, everything uh, is electronic from all the government institutions, um, at kids' schools, uh, universities, all that kind of paperwork that we used to have when I first came to Denmark 24, 25 years ago, that, that has gone. Everything is now online electronic. And I have to say it's made a huge difference to having to sort through papers, everything is online. The same goes for things like Christmas catalogues, um, clothing catalogues, that's just not a thing here. The, the Danish stores do not um, produce any kind of catalogues. And the only thing that we do get in the mail regularly is the local newspaper, but even that is online, but I quite like to have that. And also things like adverts, advertising, offers in the supermarket, we sign up for a service so you can say exactly which stores you want those flyers from and uh, we, we don't get any of them. So that, that's a bit about paperwork. Oh, th this is actually a comment. It's from uh, Lucy who lives in Metz and Metz is in France. And for those of you who have been following me for a while, you'll know that I worked at the European Supreme Court of Justice, which is in Luxembourg, but we're, we were in Luxembourg and we had France on one side, Belgium above us, and Germany on the other side. So I would do my shopping in France in the morning, and then often uh, in the evening we'd say, oh, let's go bowling, we'd go to Germany. So that that's a, a shows you how, how small uh, Luxembourg is. Anyway, um, Lucy says she was clean, cleaning the office while listening to your video. I discovered your channel when I moved out of my parents' place and into my own home. I feel like you have made my path from late teen to being an adult and a mum of two so much easier. I'm so grateful that I found you early in my life. It feels like I've grown up with your pom-poms, rah-rah-rah, hugs from mess. And Lucy, thanks for that. And, and I, I just love the comments that, I come, that come in because those are really what, what keep me going. And, and I wanted to, to say something about what has been happening this week that I've noticed that my views are down on my videos and the comments are down on the videos. And I know we're all having a difficult week <laughs> because sometimes I think, oh, my videos are rubbish. Should I bother putting them out? But I know that, you know, we all, we all have these weeks. And I had one of these weeks. I mentioned that uh, the other day. And, but even when I'm having a difficult week, we made this pact you all said at the beginning of the year, yes, please, we'll be watching and working along with you and commenting. I said I was going to be here for you three times a week, decluttering, cleaning, plan with me. 
And I want to say here that I, 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 I didn't want to make the videos the last couple of days, but I just switch on and, and pull out my tripod. You, I record with my smartphone and I get on and I do it. And I expect from you that you comment. And I just want to underline that here and say, even if you're not feeling like it, even if you don't want to do the work, at least leave a comment and tell me how you're feeling. I'm not expecting you to always be working along with me, but let, let me know how you're feeling because I said to you, it's a two-way street here. It's not just me making the videos and you sitting back, okay? Let, if you're feeling bad this week, let me know that you're feeling bad this week, that it's tough to declutter, that it's tough just to get up off your bahuki and do something, okay? Because then, then I'm ready for you and say, you know what, I, I feel the same this the way this week, but we can cheer each other on, send each other a hug, okay? So anyway, just a wee reminder about that. We did, we did have this pact. So even if you're feeling bad, let, let us know so that we can reach out to each other. Okay, on with the next one. Because I, I try not to get doom and gloomy in my videos, but you know, I, I get that way too. Okay, this message is from Helen Fabry. And she says, do you have any suggestions on where to put messy clothes? For example, the stuff that you wear when painting the house, gardening or deep cleaning. I have yet to find a, a satisfactory solution. Uh, Helen, I can tell you what I do uh, with mine. For example, I was painting one of our wardrobes in our, in our um, bedroom. I'd started painting at the weekend and I did 15 minutes the other day, almost done. And what I do with my painting gear is I keep it with the paints and with the brushes so that when I'm going to do that project, I don't need to go looking somewhere else. It's all there together. So I have like one of these kind of all in one uh, hazmat suits. If I'm doing painting, you know, when I'm doing something on the roof, on the ceiling, I can zip all the way up. And for those of you who like the movie Hot Fuzz, then I can say, I'm not Janine, a little reference to that there. Uh, and Or I've got a big old uh, sweater that is full of paint splodges. I just keep that with the paints all in that area. And it's the same with um, gardening things. I've got my gardening boots are out in the garden shed so that when I go to do gardening stuff, it's right there. So hopefully that's helpful. Or maybe if you've got a better idea, let us know. A comment from Leonie uh, Oudshorn, and it's to do with putting things on probation. When you see me decluttering in Fly Lady Zone 4, which is the bedroom, you know, I've been decluttering my clothes. I'm only set wearing certain colors this year. I'm really paring things back. I'm only wearing uh, blues, whites, pinks, reds and aqua. There's no green, brown, yellows in my wardrobe anymore. And I put items on probation. When I see that I, I'm constantly jumping over things in my wardrobe, I've turned around the hanger and I'm not wearing it. I make myself wear these items and quite often within 30 seconds or an hour, I, I realize that, oh, this actually is something I want to keep or it can be donated. And Leonie, she says, I also put other things on probation, like decorations. When I see it in the closet, I put it out and I live with it for a few days to see if I still like it. I love that. <clears throat> I love that, Lainey, because quite often we'll maybe have knickknacks or a vase. Maybe it's Easter decorations. Put those on probation too. See if you actually enjoy using them. And if not, let them go. This one is from Amy and it's talking about the fly lady zones and zone work. Hi Diane, as we rotate through the zones, if we have some zones that have a lot more clutter than others, do you, do you recommend we keep moving on or is it valid to prioritise decluttering in the worst areas, even when we're not in that zone this week? For example, I've not got much to declutter in zone five this week, that's the living room where we're working, but have a lot of clothes still to, to, to declutter in zone four. I'm tempted to focus on my clothes, but is this missing the point of the fly lady system that we keep going and cycling through? I know getting rid of anything is progress. Yes, rah, rah, rah. But I don't want to miss what makes the system work. What are your thoughts based on your own experience? Thank you. See you next time. See you next time, Amy. What I would say is we absolutely need to have balance in everything. I coach privately 
And I know that some clients, they get stuck in once they find a part of the Fly Lady system that works for them, they go full on in that, for example, with the weekly upkeep clean, and then they never make it over to the zone cleaning. That's why I'm, I'm focusing so much on the zone cleaning this year, showing you that it's not something difficult. I'm showing you, you can just do 10 minutes. You don't need to be working through the whole list. And what I would suggest for you, Amy, is you, if you have a lot of clutter in one area, you mentioned clothes, that perhaps at the beginning of the week, you spend even just five minutes working on that and then work along with us on whichever zone that we're in. Because that way you're going to get some balance, but you're also going to be paying back all the time on your problem area. And I really wouldn't worry about it if some weeks you think, oh, I, I, I can't face it, I'll just go on with whatever Diane is doing. Or maybe other weeks you say, oh, I only want to work on the clothes. It, it, it doesn't matter as, as long as you know that you're, you've got some kind of balance, okay? Because balance is everything. And always watch one of my videos when you do it because that way you'll know that it's only 10 minutes and you can stop when we're done. Oh, only a couple left, and then we'll get on to where I'm going to be next week. Next one is from Leslie Griffin, who uh, mentions that I said in Wednesday's video when, we're, when we were cleaning, I said that um, it, don't, don't worry if you're not doing the same thing as me. Maybe you're not as advanced in your cleaning and decluttering. Maybe you just need to still be doing 10 minutes of picking up items and putting them away. And I said that that's okay. And she said, this is a question about restarting the fly lady routine since she didn't complete all the steps. It's been difficult to complete each day. Is there another place to start? And Leslie, and, and to every one of you who are thinking, I need to do the fly ladies, 31 baby steps, have those absolutely down pat before I can move on to other things. You've got to ditch, got to ditch that thinking. We have our morning routine and we have our evening routine. Just get what you can done of that and then, you know, do your 10 minutes of cleaning a week, 10 minutes of decluttering a week and you will see huge changes. You've got to ditch that feeling that you have to be going through all the steps because, of course, it will also depend on your nature. Maybe your nature is that you absolutely have to work through uh, a list from number one to number five in that exact order. That doesn't work for me. I have my morning routine and my evening routine. And every day it's a completely different order, but I do get them checked off. So, so don't worry about seeing things as it's prescribed on even on my videos or on other information that you watch about the Fly Lady system. Just keep moving forward, okay? One pom-pom in front of the other. The last question is from Marianne Cage, a more personal question. It's about my uh, winter bathing and uh, about my cold plunge routine. She's wondering what the sequence of me uh, getting dressed, undressed, uh, putting on my makeup, what, how that happens. So in the morning, wake up, I spend a penny. That, that means going to the loo, if you're not familiar with that uh, expression. I'm out in the garden, in the garden shed, my she shack. I'm in my plunge pool. I come back into the house, have my coffee to warm up. It's very important that you, you warm up before you go into a hot shower. Because if you go straight into the hot, hot, hot shower, you're, it's sending signals to your body that the, the, the warmth needs to go inside and you'll freeze even more in your fingers and your toes. So make sure you warm up first before you have your hot shower. Then I get dressed for the day, down to hair, makeup. And then sometimes I will be going down for my skinny dip in the sea or getting on the bike, meeting friends, or maybe I'm going out to... Uh, on Saturdays to my Blue Tits Chill Swimmers group. And when I say that I'm down at the club, it's not some fancy spa, there's no hot water. There are some very rudimentary showers, but you can't use uh, shampoo or soap in them because the water, you're standing on a kind of grill thing, and the water goes back into the sea. So obviously we don't want to pollute anything. It, it's mainly just to uh, rinse off if you don't like the salt water on you. But actually, Danish, uh, there's very little salt in the Danish sea. So we, we, never, we never use the shower down there. So once I've been in the sea and I'm swimming heads up, breaststroke, uh, I just dry off, 
put on my clothes and that's me ready for my day. Great questions on to where are we going to be working next week and then I'll tell you about some books and get onto the self-care. So this week you have been working along with me, woohoo, very hard, in Fly Lady Zones 5 and Fly Lady, uh, and Fly Lady Zone 1. Next week we're moving forward, I'm not going to be here, next week we're moving on to Fly Lady Zone 2 which is the kitchen and as I said, I'm not going to be here, but don't worry, I, you know, I have thousands, literally thousands of YouTube videos and I, I will put up links, I'll probably post a link where you can see me working in Fly Ladies into the kitchen. But where am I going to be? Well, I'm, I'm so excited. I'm going off on a little uh, girls trip. I'm going to the Winter Swimming World Championships. Woohoo! Now, you know, I'm a winter swimmer, a competitive ice swimmer, and I've participated in the Danish Championships, the World Championships of Winter Swimming in Bled, Slovenia, that was in 2020. Last year, I was at the Ice Swimming World Championships in the French Alps. And this year, I'm off to the Winter Swimming World Championships in Tallinn in Estonia. Woohoo! And I'm going with my uh, American bestie, Erica from America. And also, we're meeting up with my friend Jen. Remember my friend Jen who relocated back to the UK, to Nottingham, to Dottingham, last year. So we are super excited. And Jen and Erica haven't participated in the World Championships before and it was, it was a dream of uh, Jen to go. She, she said before she left here, she said, oh, Diana, I would love to participate. Do you think I could do that? And I was like, yeah, of course, Let, let's all go together and, and have a fun week of it. So we're flying, uh, Erica and I are flying over uh, next week. I will not be here. I will try and keep you updated on the community tab here on, uh, on YouTube. And we're kind of nervous, excited about the competition. But you know what? The, the, the people there are so nice. And, you know, even if I've done it before, I'm always so, so nervous just before we uh, are under starter's orders and, and we're off. But I'm, I'm swimming several races this time. And also one of the fun things that we're doing is we are, there's a Guinness Book of Records attempt to do the world's longest winter swimming relay and everybody's swimming 25 meters it's taking place in the evening it will be dark we've got glow in the dark uh, heads head pieces to wear and i think uh, last time i checked there's something like 650 people signed up so each of us does 25 meters and it just goes on and on and on so Anyway, we wish us the best of luck. And one of the things that's on my packing list is my pom-poms because I'm going to be standing on the side when Eric and Jen are doing their races. Ra ra ra. So anyway, <laughs> enough of my excitement. Uh, and on to some book talk. I'll be taking a book with me to read for, for, for my downtime where we're staying at a fabulous hotel and there, there's a proper spa there with, with hot water and showers, luxury hotel book suggestions this week and thank you to my lovely subscribers oh and, and I just want to give a plug for myself here I am doing these videos for free I don't take money for memberships I don't do sponsorships I don't put annoying ads in the middle of my of my videos so we can really focus together uh, but I do ask that if you can share my videos I would love to get to 100,000 subscribers and I love the subscribers that I've got because I've had quite a lot of book suggestions from you, my dear subscribers, and I want to give you two of them this week. The books that are being suggested, they're two uh, ecclesiastical cosy detectives, so, so interesting that, that um, slant. So the first suggestion came from Anne Knowles, and she suggested the books by the Reverend Richard Coles, who is um, a minister, a priest, a pastor, uh, what do you got? A reverend, uh, and if you if you recognise the name Richard Coles, he was actually in Bronsky Beat. Do you remember Bronsky Beat with Jimmy Somerville, the band? I loved Bronsky Beat. Anyway, Richard Coles is a, a reverend in the English Church. I'm not sure which denomination, Anglican. Not very sure. Anyway, he writes cosy crime books, 
and the the one that I've managed that, that I've managed to track down from our local Danish library is one of the Canon Clement Mysteries. And the second uh, series that was recommended to me, that thank you, Julia Scott. And Julia Scott recommended because I had mentioned uh, the PD James. I've just finished this one. I really liked it. Uh, the last couple of chapters, it all went a bit weird. But anyway, I, I, I love PD James, but she is, she can be quite wordy and quite heavy and a lot of uh, literary references. I, I prefer kind of uh, shorter, not, not so heavy books. And Julia said that uh, a series which wasn't quite as deep as the P.D. James was the G.M. Maillet or Maliet uh, books. And the series is called the Reverend Max Tudor series. And again, managed to track down one of the books via our local library. We, we, we get everything for free and we also have the um, overdrive system. Ooh, can't wait to read them. And if you have any more good suggestions for us, let us know. I, I like the kind of cosy mystery thing. I can't do anything that's too uh, dark or anything too realistic. So I, I, I like to keep my, <laughs> I like to keep my, my murders and my mysteries cosy. Right, and talking of things cosy, let's get into the self-care. And most of the self-care ideas, they are free, just like my videos. And the idea behind these self-care ideas is just to give yourself a little hug. So hopefully you can do several of them. And I love the comments that are coming in that you love me giving you choices because otherwise you don't do the self-care or you don't see these things as self-care. So anyway, um, number one, mission number one, should you choose to accept it, it is the start of a new season, spring, official start of spring here in Denmark today. If you're in the Southern Hemisphere, you're moving into a new season. But it's to do something a bit seasonal. It could be food. Case in point, that this will be mine. L little Danish for lesson for you again. For those of you who have uh, been following me for a while, you know that the word scum in Denmark means marshmallow or foam. And this is påske, which means Easter. Easter marshmallows, which are little bunnies, marshmallow bunnies covered in chocolate. So, so maybe you want to buy yourself some seasonal food this week. Uh, the other thing I was thinking of seasonal wise is not quite yet, but I'm going to be getting out in the garden soon. And when I was at IKEA the other day, I saw some gardening gloves. And I thought, oh, maybe I'll get some new uh, gardening gloves for myself. I, I usually get some kind of cheap gloves because I like to just kind of really use them and then get another pair next year instead of getting a really good pair. With... Anyway, that, that's just me. So number one, do something change of season-ish. Mission number two, this was one which was uh, mentioned by Jodie, Jodie D, who is a regular commenter here, is to put away your phone and take a little technology break. Now that could just be for an afternoon, it could be a set time of day, it could be a couple of days, maybe if it's a whole week, but, but keep watching my YouTube videos because I'm here to uplift you. And I, I realised that, that I was getting into a really bad habit of uh, checking my YouTube stuff first thing in the morning. I, I don't do that anymore because YouTube, uh, it, it gives you too much information sometimes and I would check and would say, oh, um, subscribers aren't watching your video as much as they normally do or this video isn't being shared as much as it normally is and like you know we all have ups and downs and, and I don't need to know that you know because otherwise again you know I'm going to be here making those videos anyway technology break however shape or form you want to do that mission number three we have been working in flying lady zone five this week did you find a lot of DV, DVDs, um, TV series? Do you need to declutter some subscriptions that you've got? Watch one of your favourite TV series. If you need a list, last week I went into depth about the, the TV series that I like, The Cozy Crimes. I gave you a full list of things that I've watched, things that I enjoy watching. Or maybe um, research some new TV series that you can watch. And mission number four is to use something that you got for Christmas, okay? Or maybe you got it at the end of the year or you got it for your birthday, you haven't used it yet. And what I mean by that is maybe you got a gift set 
Maybe you got some new uh, jewellery, some special jewellery for, for Christmas and you've been keeping it for a special occasion. Every day is a special occasion. Maybe you got a new piece of technology, a new iPad and you haven't set it up yet. Maybe you got a coupon for a massage or to get your nails done. And I've already done that this week because Vibeka and I, we both had, you know, the calendar, the one from Ikea where you saw me in December opening, there was a chocolate every day. And we also got some uh, coupons for 100 Danish kronas uh, coupon for Ikea, plus um, a visit to the Ikea restaurant for a hot dish and a drink. And I said to Vibeka, these vouchers, <laughs> they're about to run out. So we did that on, when was it, on Tuesday? And Vibeka went for the vegetarian meatballs and a chocolate milk. And I had um, apple juice and fish and chips. And very good it was too. So anyway, use up something that you got for Christmas that you have been saving or putting off using. Phew! Okay, so that, so that was a long one today. I just wanted to give you a real rah, 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 okay? Because I, I know for many of us, it's been a difficult week. But if we just keep putting one foot in front of the other, you know what? Be better days are coming. All right. So anyway, big hugs to anybody who needs one. Let me know which self-care you're going for. One, two, three, four. Maybe all four of them. Okay. Live long and prosper. May the cozy plan with me hygge be with you. And I'll see you in a couple of weeks with a wrap, wrap, wrap. Bye for now. And remember to cheer us on.